Uh, aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and this is Master Paul. Very grateful to be connecting with you today. It is a Wednesday. I want to say it's the 6th of the month. I think I'm correct on that. 6th of um, December. Rapidly moving towards the end of the year. Rapidly moving towards uh, a new year, 2018. And so... Uh, during this time of year, there are a lot of people that are going through some significant uh, emotional conditions because of the uh, holidays, and it tends to impact their happiness. So today I wanted to do a live stream on happiness and that it is a choice and kind of pay attention to some of those things that take away from our happiness because if we can identify those, then we can maintain that much easier in our life. So I hope that this um, resonates with you and that you stick around for this uh, live stream today. Yesterday and uh, Monday, Tuesday, and, and uh, we did some excellent reconnection. I'd just been gone for a, about a week and a half uh, with visiting my teacher, Master Shaw, in Toronto for a live event. And so on Monday, when I came back, I did a uh, presentation on Da I, The Greatest Love and offered a beautiful blessing from this new book that just came out. <clears throat> and then yesterday, I did a uh, live stream teaching wisdom and blessing on uh, the, the four secrets or the four keys to having a, a uh, peaceful heart. And this was related to the see no evil, hear no evil, think no evil, speak no evil. And the wisdom came in the form of how can we mm, not allow these unpleasant things to enter our life <clears throat> um, so that we can control the peacefulness of our heart so that when we communicate speak think or act we are doing that from a peaceful place also and thereby stopping the karmic circle that doesn't always serve us well if we're not aware so if you missed either of those live streams, then please consider um, going to my Facebook page and scrolling down uh, a foot or two, go through a day or two, and you'll see those listed there. Um, there's some blessings in those live streams and some great wisdom. So we've had some folks join us. So welcome, uh, Anne-Marie Grant, Aloha Phyllis. Welcome also to Jennifer Cress Smith. Uh, welcome to uh, Kathy Arnold. Aloha, Lisa. And welcome also to Natasha. Welcome to Karen Leahola. Leola. And uh, Lotsia. Welcome. Aloha, Rawita. And welcome also to Sharon and Angie Kenny. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Looks like a low number today. Maybe Facebook is still out grabbing some folks. Uh, normally by now we would have about double the numbers that we're seeing but other people maybe it's Christmas shopping they're busy doing something so either way holidays come around very fast I actually put up my Christmas tree yesterday and so uh, hopefully I'll get some gifts underneath it over the next couple of weeks <clears throat> so let me know what was your experience yesterday if you were on yesterday uh, what wisdom or insights or value did you gain from the uh, wisdom on the four keys to maintaining a peaceful heart? And how did that impact you? Were you able to take any of that and apply it later that day and even today? One of the keys, obviously, is not only receiving the wisdom but acting upon it <laughs> in a daily basis. That's always a good thing to do. Uh, we want to make sure we... Uh, employ the wisdom otherwise it's simply knowledge it does, it's not uh, not wisdom until it's acted upon <clears throat> so welcome Anne Marie so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we'll connect heart to heart soul to soul while we allow Facebook to grab some more souls out there and I'm sure Kristen is sharing and posting in some groups so we'll start by placing our hands in soul light soul service hand position we drop the left hand in front of the heart center and the right hand remains pointed towards heaven and close our eyes and let us fully connect and I will invite in the beings of light <clears throat> dear beloved divine Da source our beloved creator 
They're all angels, healing angels, and archangels, masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifus, and saints, Buddhas and bodhisattvas. Our individual heavens teams, guides, angels, and saints, we love you, we honor you, deeply appreciate you. We thank you for your unconditional love, your unconditional presence in humanity, and your unconditional service. We ask most humbly and most sincerely that you join us here today. Come to sit with each and every one of us. Come to sit in our heart centers. Bless us as we work with today's live stream to release any of the Shen, Qi, and Jing blockages that inhibit us from having happiness in our life. <clears throat> Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, we love you, honor you, appreciate you, respect you. And we invite you as well to please come to be with us today. We invite all souls and all universes to come and to chant with us the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony. We invite each and every one of these souls to uh, offer this unconditional service each and every time there is any chanting. So for anybody that is new that will watch this at some point in the future watching this recording, then... Um, uh, the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony is uh, a worldwide song. It's translated in over 40 languages. And if you follow Kristen Rojas' post, she put links to it and the words. So you may join in. Also, this is a blessing. So let us all chant together. <coughs> a welcome to everybody who's joined in. I'll connect with you in a minute. And this is a service. So let us serve. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, Ha, Li, Lula. Lula, Li, Lula. Wo I wash in her ling, Wo I run ran lay, Wang ling rung her musher shung, Shung I ping on her say, Shung I ping on her say, I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So once again, thank you all for coming. Thank you for joining. Uh, aloha and welcome to Anne-Marie Love. Welcome also to Catherine O'Shea. Aloha, Dio. Uh, welcome, Kristen Strachan. And aloha, Vanessa. Welcome. Welcome also to Robert Dosa coming in from Romania. It's got to be one or two in the morning over there. Welcome also to Doug. And welcome, uh, Tony. Aloha, Rianne. <clears throat> and if anybody I missed your name, forgive me. So yesterday was a very powerful message. Uh, welcome also Jagdeep. <clears throat> and yesterday's message was so powerful, right about the 12, 13 minute mark, when I was just getting juicy, um, the live stream got challenged, which is extremely unusual. Uh, it rarely happens nowadays because I'm in a very uh, good frequency zone and a very, um, a very good 4G signal. So whenever that happens, to me, it, it means that the message is very important. And actually what happened was, was the numbers were building up. There was about 40, 50 people coming in live watching. And, and after it reconnected in about a minute, I dropped down to 20. So 20 souls that could have benefited from that wisdom did not. It was very sad. But this is the way our happiness can be taken away from us. Today's subject is on the subject of happiness. <clears throat> and it's an simple example. And from the wisdom that Master Shah brings to us, 
and that I share with you to, to apply to life, to make life happier and healthier, um, everything has a cause. Every, there's an, for every effect, there is a cause. For every cause, there is an effect. Everything is interconnected. There is nothing that does not have a predecessor or a cause that led to the effect that you're in the process of experiencing. <clears throat> so what was the cause of the effect of yesterday's live stream being cut off? Well, one could say what well, was just a blip in the 4G signal. Yeah, you could say that. But at least from the perspective and the wisdom the Master Shah brings, that it would be the negative frequencies or negative energies that do not like the um, forward movement of the positive energies and positive frequencies. Uh, a different perspective might be that darkness did not like it and it was trying to uh, stop the light from coming to you. There's different perspectives, different verbiages, but this kind of thing happens to us, you, me, I, all of us, our children, our, our lovers, our uh, parents, our grandparents, our um, spouses and mates. And things happen in our life that can take our happiness away. And so I will use yesterday's example just as a, as a catapult. Uh, before I do that, I want to acknowledge those who have joined us just recently here. <clears throat> so welcome, Missy Dodd. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned your name earlier. And welcome also to uh, Jagdeep and Dennis, Denise. And welcome M.A. Drade. Aloha, Jennifer. And welcome also to Sarah MacArthur. And welcome Jyota. And welcome Heather Clem. Thank you all for hitting the share button, letting other people know about today's live stream. So, the thing about life as it happens to us we can choose to um, accept it and move on uh, as if it had no effect on us whatsoever. We can choose to uh, react to it. We have many, many choices available to us. The title of today's teaching was Happiness as a Choice. <clears throat> I imagine as people scrolled through that and saw it in their timeline, they're like, right, whatever. There's definitely going to be some people that question that statement that happiness is a choice. So like, well, how can it be a choice when this happened to me and that happened to me and this person dumped on me and that person da 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 da. I had a, a, a student friend today that sent me a text that um, a family member, uh, a, a sibling family member is going to try to take their daughter away from them. There's truly no reason for it. He's been the father of this, this person for 10 years. <coughs> um, and um, he doesn't do drugs or anything like that. Uh, so it's a, a internal family thing. So one could say, you know, why does this happen to me? How can happiness be a choice? We all have our stories. We all have those things that happen to us. The wisdom that Master Shah brings to the table, Aloha Helena, thank you for joining from Sweden. And Aloha and welcome to uh, Jennifer Money and uh, Heather. And so, when life happens to us, our choice is not necessarily, I'm just going to put on a happy face and ignore it. Our choice is how do we uh, recognize what it is that has come to us, how do we process it in the highest, healthiest, uh, most balanced way so that we do not uh, backpedal from any place that we are at, if we have gained a place of happiness, how do we process it so that we don't move out of our place of happiness? And or how do we process where we're at, <clears throat> which may not be that pleasant of a place in our current mindset, attitude, or belief, and how do we move that to a place of happiness? Uh, and Robert says, everything happens for us, not to us. It's a very uh, accurate statement. It happens for us in that it gives us an opportunity. Everything that, that happens, cause leads to effect. If you're in the middle of an effect, an experience, there was a cause. There is an ancient statement that my teacher, Master Shah, um, repeats. <clears throat> and he says, the bodhisattva, which is a term that means the, the person on the path to become a Buddha, the bodhisattva fears not the consequence of the effect. They fear the cause. They know already what 
brings unhappiness into their life. They know it already what brings disaster, what brings relationship challenges. They know what brings that. It's the cause. And so when we look at how do we have control over the happiness in our life, how can we make it a choice? It begins with this awareness of cause and effect. Oftentimes when something happens to us, then we do not, I would say for almost the vast majority of humanity, uh, very rarely would they jump instantly into, huh, why did that happen? I wonder what thing that I or my ancestors have done caused this experience to come to me. And if it wasn't something that I or my ancestors did, as Robert has indicated, I wonder what value <coughs> is available for me with this experience that can assist me to being a better soul, a higher, more elevated, more aware soul. Sometimes it's not a karma. Sometimes it's not what I or my ancestors did. Sometimes heaven just gives us a test. Sometimes heaven just throws us a curveball to see how we react to it. Because if we are dedicated to serve humanity, if we are, uh, we a spouse to be someone who is here to help others, to be of value, to be of service, if we a spouse that we want to become enlightened, if we are on a path of spirituality and, and we tell heaven in our, in our private minds that we wish to grow and, and, um, and, and be a better person and become enlightened and, and anything that, that is similar to that in, in our internal conversations, heaven hears everything and they very well could show up uh, uh, offer us an opportunity to see how we respond. Do we respond with thank you? Do we respond with, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder how I can best deal with this and remain positive so that I can purify and process through this with the greatest love. So <clears throat> I wish to state very clearly, it's not easy to do that. Very easy for me to say that here. Very easy for me to say that uh, from, from this chair when nothing necessarily bad is happening uh, to me or about me. So I don't, uh, not to say that I don't have the same problems as everybody else or that I don't get challenged the same way as everybody else does. Um, but it's again, how do we work with those challenges? And each and every time we put forth the effort to work with those challenges, we get better at it. We sometimes, and for myself, I definitely speak about this, it's taken me years and years and years to be able to address it almost instantly. It's, you know, sometimes it's still not right away. Sometimes I'm five minutes into the irritation or the anger or the, or the frustration uh, of whatever has happened. And, you know, I have to catch it, stop it, uh, process through it. Uh, uh, and, and shift my frequency and my emotion around it uh, and move to a place of forgiveness quickly and then uh, go into, okay, why? Um, <clears throat> so it's not something necessarily that's an instantaneous choice. People don't become instantaneously Buddha. People don't become instantaneously God or Jesus or anything of that nature. Um, uh, well, I won't say that about God. We don't know. But as far as the other beings of light, it's very unlikely that it was an instantaneous thing. They were born and whoop, they're just instantly perfect. Most uh, of those souls that found their way to enlightenment found it through a process. And so the, the process requires us to, on a consistent basis, um, be as conscious as possible uh, and move to, okay, this is either caused by me or my ancestors <clears throat> and our karmic debts that has brought this exact condition to me that I'm not enjoying right now. And it doesn't matter if it's a relationship issue. It doesn't matter I see some things pop up, say I was almost murdered. It doesn't matter if you have a PTSD or head injury. It doesn't matter what the label is, what the source of the, of the condition was. It doesn't matter what it is. It's truly irrelevant. It's just a sideline or a sidebar in the story that's unique to you, but it's just a sidebar. Uh, and I'm not trying to minimize it. I'm trying to offer perspective that allows um, a shift in the energy around it, which brings about the greatest opportunity 
to have happiness and make it a choice. And so that shift in perspective that Master Shah brings to us is stop. Address it as soon as you can stop. Remember, that might take five or ten minutes into it before you say, ah, this is not where I want to go. This is not where I need to go. This is not serving me. I'm going to stop and I'm going to come off this emotional uh, roller coaster that I am have been on this last two, three, five minutes, one hour, one day, one year. Some of the people that are watching may have been stuck on a, a major revenge cycle for one year or a major hate cycle for one year. Um, but we all have our length of time. The idea is to shorten that length of time so that we, our choice to remain happy is very palpable and within our uh, conscious ability. We do that by the recognition of the karma involved and or it could be simply a test from heaven. If you're on the spiritual journey, it could easily be just a spiritual test from heaven. <clears throat> um, yeah, very good, but are you disabled? Okay, woe is me. Uh, you can turn this off and not hear this. It might, might not be something you want to hear, but if you're disabled, what was the cause of that? Were you, were you in a previous lifetime or were your ancestors in a previous lifetime someone who caused others to be disabled? Maybe not. Maybe you didn't. Maybe what happened was at the soul level, you chose to be disabled purposely so that you could remove ego so that the others that are around you had the opportunity to to open their heart more and be of greater service we have to open our mind uh, and awareness to how and why these things might occur we can sit there on our on our tush and go yeah woe is me well this didn't happen to you and this didn't happen to you and what about this and what about that well you can sit there and wallow in that but how has that served you so far has it brought you happiness so far i uh, i am grateful that i have not been handicapped if i was it's highly likely i would have went through all of the processes you're currently going through and i might still be stuck in them um i did not choose that path or nor maybe i experienced that in previous lifetimes and worked through that karma i don't know <clears throat> but whatever it is if we have any degree of negativity towards it, if we have any degree of uh, wallowing in it or victimization mindsets around it, uh, you don't understand because you're not that kind of the perspective. Although that's not an untrue statement, I don't understand uh, from your perspective. It, it also doesn't matter in relationship to this wisdom and teaching. In relationship to this wisdom and teaching, which is a... Um, a, a teaching that runs through the highest spiritual wisdoms that go out there. It's just my my version of, of speaking it. Uh, the greatest wisdom and teaching says everything happens for a reason. There is a cause and an effect. And the minute we can work with that and not point fingers outside of us, not be in a place of, of a victim or anything like that, then we're really moving forward. And so um, I know this conversation might touch a, a few uh, nerves and might might cause some irritations i'm doing my best to honor everyone's perspective um, and at the same time share with you these higher wisdoms that if acted upon can create the highest happinesses uh, so let's see welcome diana <clears throat> welcome also to judy parker and rose montanari and welcome elizabeth aloha richard And welcome also to Brenda. And welcome Nikki Davis. Okay, I think I've acknowledged everybody. So, the steps would be this. Catch yourself in whatever emotional place you are in as a result of a current or past experience. Sometimes we're just stuck in the drama of a past experience where a spouse died or a um, someone we love died or a uh, <clears throat> a, um, a spouse left us and took everything from us and we have nothing left or um, a car accident left us disabled there's a you know sometimes it's something from the past sometimes you're doing okay through your life you're puttering along doing okay doing okay doing okay and then something happens this happens a lot, almost on a daily basis, where something just comes in and gives us the possibility of disrupting our life. So 
the percentage and amount of disruption is truly and completely up to us. Uh, granted, some things are bigger than others, but even if it's something that's quite large on the surface, it can be substantially minimized by our perspective on it. Um, so we look at we look at the emotion, we look at it at for exactly what it is, cause and effect, and we address it from that perspective. When we address things from a perspective of cause and effect, we have that which is inside of us and that which is outside of us. Like uh, Rose says, you know, uh, a person very close to her uh, romantic relationship just passed on. She couldn't save them. And so that's something outside of us that we can't necessarily control because it's their karma, it's their life conditions, their soul conditions that led to that uh, a crossing over. Um, we here on earth, we assume that could be a very unpleasant thing or we know that they're going to the light, but um, uh, maybe we don't know for sure. We have our own thought processes around it. We also uh, uh, think about how does that affect us? This affects my money, it affects my heart, it affects all these things. So it puts us in a place of unhappiness in generally speaking. So we can choose in every instance to address everything from that higher loving perspective and say, okay, well, uh, temporarily this might put uh, impact, impact my finances, but it'll all work out because God has my highest and best involved. That puts forth in a positive energy frequency, also puts a small smile on your face. Okay, my heart is, is hurting right now, um, but that's because um, uh, I have had attachments to this physical romance and love and connection and attention, but I know that uh, this soul is always present and they can uh, always send me love in that way. And I know that I can always um, find love again in many different ways, including through my source creator. And that is a temporary panacea, but it's the self-talk that allows us to stay in that higher place of happiness. What's the alternative? You know, going down the depression path, going down the woe is me path, going down the I'm a victim path, Everything is a choice. It's how we choose to look at it. So that was an example of something outside of us. Then we have the stuff that happens inside of us. Our guilt, our um, victimization mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs. Um, you know, why did that happen to me? You know, everything was going so well and then all of a sudden, mm, I lost my job or, you know, I had the car accident or... Okay, these are internal based things. In almost every case, it's karmic. In almost every case, we created it. And so Master Shah's wisdom would say, ask for forgiveness. Uh, offer forgiveness. Ask for and offer forgiveness so that we process through whatever it might be as quickly as possible and recognize that if we go to the other side of it, we have the propensity to expand out that suffering a lot, lot, lot longer. So when we have the choice to be happy, it's really about looking at anything unpleasant that comes to us, past, present, or future, through a different set of eyes, through aware eyes, and making a choice to respond to it with um, things that we know work well, like forgiveness practices and choices. Uh, also, there is, of course, the, the sheer necessity to do conscious, common sense things like surround yourself with uh, things that will pick you up. So if you're in a uh, condition where something unpleasant occurred, whether it was a, a, a loss of a paycheck, a loss of your wallet, uh, 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 anything of that nature, do something that, that causes you to shift your frequencies. Put on love, peace, and harmony. Uh, go out of your house and go out and serve other people. Okay. When you get out of your stuff, whatever your stuff is, <clears throat> it shifts the frequency. When we stay in our stuff, whatever our stuff is, what are in essence are we doing? We're bringing to us more of what we are focusing on. Nobody wants that. Who wants more of something negative that we're focusing on? Nobody wants that, of course. So we want to be conscious, even if we're in that unpleasant place, even if we find it difficult to drag ourselves out of it. One of the most efficient ways is through service. Get yourself out of that lounge chair. Get yourself out, you know, out of that, that place of, of unpleasantness 
and drag yourself to wherever you can offer service, whether it's the church or the temple or the monastery or the soup kitchen or uh, uh, even to go um, take care of your sister's killed children. Uh, doesn't matter what it is. If you're making others happier and healthier in any way, shape, or form, you are not wallowing in your stuff. This allows you to shift the energetic frequencies, which in turn shifts the potential for you manifesting more of it. So these are kind of some common sense things. Happiness is a choice. It has never not been a choice. It's often our patterns. Now, many of us have many things to be grateful in our life. Many things to be grateful for. Do you have a roof over your head? Shake your head, yes. Okay. Uh, there might be one person watching today that's living in a car, but they have a roof over their head. Do you have food? Is there food around you? Okay. Maybe it's in the refrigerator, maybe it's in the cabinet. That's another thing to be grateful for. Uh, if you're not handicapped and other people are, another thing to be grateful for. If you're not dying of cancer and other people you know are, another thing to be grateful for. Uh, if you can look out the window and see the sun rise, it's another thing to be grateful for because you have the eyes to see. You have the sensations in the body to feel the warmth of the sun, another thing to be grateful for. Gratitude is the fuel of a positive future, of a happy based future. You have a choice. What happens is we witness as we go through our life from childhood up, we witness our brothers and sisters, our teachers, our coworkers, our, 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 our um, people in school that are of the same age, peers, uh, our parents. We witness others responding in a way that is not of the highest uh, value, not of a value that processes quickly through it and puts on a, a positive take on things. Um, now, if you have witnessed somebody that has, uh, has always had a positive take on things, um, then you are very blessed because that has helped you substantially. But a lot of us have not. We've witnessed other things. And so it's, uh, it makes it very difficult to, to switch out of that. But we can do that. And it's simply a moment to moment choice. Gratitude is one of the simplest, simplest, simplest keys that you can consistently apply almost almost every minute you can find something to be grateful for. We just have to train our brain to find those things to be grateful. I'm grateful that my car works. I am grateful that I have a gas tank that is full of gas. I am grateful that this live stream is working right now. I am grateful that my stomach is full. I am grateful that my teeth aren't hurting. I am grateful that uh, I'm not cold and freezing like other people right now. I, am, I can go on and on and on because I've trained myself to look for all those little things that we all take for granted. And if we go from just saying the words to actually truly being grateful for not being cold when there are a lot of people that are dying at this moment because it is so cold and they have nothing to keep them warm. I am so grateful, Heaven. Thank you for allowing me to have the conditions in which I am not uncomfortable in my body temperatures. Truly, truly grateful. Okay. Doesn't that feel beautiful? It felt good to me. Gratitude is the way in which we can monitor and maintain that happiness quotient. Uh, you might think that it's a temporary fix. Um, when the one that has crossed over comes into your mind, why wouldn't you use gratitude? Why would you not switch anything that is anything unpleasant around that crossing over to a gratitude thought? I'm so grateful for uh, uh, this memory and that experience and this experience and that experience. I'm so grateful I know that God exists and that my uh, loved one is, is with the divine. I am so grateful that um, 
Uh, I can communicate with them anytime. I am so grateful for, and you just go on and on and on. I am so grateful for that opportunity to eat this. I am so grateful that now I have these siblings and these parents and these people that are still with me. There's many different things that we can be grateful for, even when it comes around somebody else leaving this world at this time. I am so grateful for the, their soul's intelligence to know when was the best time for them because they might be coming back and might be my grandchild at some point and I can uh, enjoy that experience. I am so grateful that they might come back and be an unconditional universal servant, an enlightened being that saves a million people's lives and they would not be able to be that person if their soul wasn't intelligent enough to make the choice to leave at that time. We don't know individual souls' choices, why they come, why they go, when they depart, when they do. But I can tell you, everything is planned. Everything is built on cause and effect. Everything has a reason behind it. And for us to be in a place of wallowing, in a place of, of unpleasantness, because uh, that's all we comprehend, is not a good enough excuse. It's not. We have to... Uh, increase our awareness, increase our intelligence, our spiritual intelligence. We have to increase our wisdom so that we can look at it from a much, much higher perspective and stay in that higher place of gratitude, stay in that place of a positive choice. Um, some people out there suffer from significant depression. Okay, uh, Depression has a couple of, of sources. One is a chemical imbalance in the body. Another is the heart chakra being uh, basically closed and a great deal of darkness that has surrounded it. <clears throat> and so one is spiritual, one is physical. One begets the other. So if you're not enjoying that space, then do what you can to, in, to balance out the chemicals in your body. Don't just listen to the doctor and take a pharmaceutical. Become educated in different ways to balance out the chemicals in the body. Recognize there's magnetic therapies, that it could be parasitical in nature. Cleanse your body out. Uh, change your diet. You, you could just be taking milk and milk is causing a hormone deficiency which is causing the depression. You don't know what you don't know. Become educated. Figure out different ways to overcome these things. The heart center is, is, a, is a chakra center, and it can have significant karma blockages in there. Some people just receive a blessing to clear their chakra blockages, uh, a real blessing, not, not uh, just wave a gemstone over you and you're finished, but a real blessing that clears it out, puts protection around it, and then they're good to go. They're off their psychotics. In that case, it was a spiritual karma blockage. Sometimes the karma blockages create the chemical blockages. This is another example. We can blame these things like a depression on something outside of us, but we have the opportunity and the, the availability to become intelligent on these things and to make choices to, um, to clean out our body and or become spiritually aware and do something to clear the spiritual blockages. There is very few people who, who do go through a full body cleanse and a good, healthy, spiritual purification in which they do deep forgiveness and they receive the special blessings to clear the heart chakra blockages. If you combine both of those, it's, it's, it's very rare that somebody would still be in a depressive state. But how do I know this? Because I've done the homework. I've researched it out. There are many things that you all can throw at me and I can offer a perspective back on it so that you can have a happy uh, turn. It's not that I'm, you know, smart or wise or anything like that. It's just a choice. That's the title of this teaching. Happiness is a choice. I chose to become educated in this. I chose to find a solution to ill health. I chose to find a solution to finding my path to enlightenment. Uh, I have chosen to leave this master and, and follow a different one which left me to a higher level. I chose to leave that master, all leading to higher levels of happiness so that I could be here to serve you. And you know, maybe only one sentence impacts you positively, but if that one sentence keeps you alive, if that one sentence moves you forward and helps you to have greater happiness, wonderful. What causes bipolar? Karma. Everything is karma. 
Bipolar is brain problem, heart chakra problem, and chemical problem. Very possible some relationship to thyroid. <clears throat> but if you got a new brain, you got a new heart chakra, you got a, a blessing for the thyroid, you go and clean up your diet, do a, a, a very clean diet, it's highly likely you would have a great deal more control over that particular set of responses. How do you get a new brain? Check in with me. This is stuff that I do. I can replace your brain. I can give you new brain cells. I can clear the karma. I know it sounds weird, especially if you're new, but it is doable. You just need to do your homework. There's many people here who have vouched for the efficacy of what I'm talking about. So these things are available. The root is always karma. Always, 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 always. Bipolar is a significant uh, significant high-level mental karma that means that in a previous lifetime you were ancestors had uh, possibly not the good person you are today but had possibly orchestrated some significant um, unpleasant things upon others that created great mental trauma to them therefore it comes back to bother us in this day so these things are fixable as the karma gets cleared as we do things to clear out the potential for chemical imbalances there's <clears throat> there's solutions for everything if you look at karma as the root cause and then you look to clear the karmas you do that using master Shah's wisdom and teachings forgiveness practice divine services uh, love service 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 helping others helping others helping others um, yeah there are always many factors that's why you have to address it uh, in the <clears throat> other teachings that, that master Shah brings to us there are Shen Qi and Jing blockages Shen is soul blockages, heart blockages. Okay, heart blockages are uh, misuse of, of power, greed, uh, corruption, uh, um, selfishness, mind blockages, negativity, you know, uh, many, many high level mind blockages, including bringing harm to others and causing them to go through major mental traumas. These all create karmic blockages. There is also, um, uh, uh, energy and matter blockages which impact our chemical body and so in the Americas and in the East almost all of these uh, maladies that we have in life uh, are addressed with pharmaceuticals um, and Eastern medicine herbs uh, uh, acupuncture things of that nature um, sometimes meditation helps da, 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 da. but it's relatively nominal it basically covers it up and makes it to where you can move forward um, if we recognize that the source of all blockages is our karmic debts, then we can recognize that those karmic debts created the conditions in which the chemical balances went off, created the conditions in which we have blockages in our brain, created the conditions in which our thyroid is off and impacts our emotions and so forth. Karma is the predecessor to all the wonderful things in our life and all the not so wonderful things. So happiness is a choice when we recognize how to address these different areas of our life with spiritual intelligence heal the soul first and the mind and the body will follow this is the one sentence secret that master shah has brought to us heal the soul first clear the blockages at the level of soul the karma blockages the soul mind body blockages clear the blockages at the level of the soul the mind and the body have no choice but to adjust because the soul is the leader the soul leads all of our experiences. The soul is the creator of our unpleasant stuff and our pleasant stuff. So when you clear the blockages here, this is just a reflection of what happens here. So when you deal with things at the level of origination, you can absolutely impact the, the suffering we're having here in the physical world. Happiness is a choice by choosing how to respond to react by recognizing cause and effect not to being a victim anymore and choosing how to uh, do the necessary practices or forgivenesses or spiritual karma cleansings to release the origination of the effect so that you don't have more of the effect and then that also causes us to uh, manifest a more positive future simply because we're not focusing on negative things find things to be grateful for it's not a, a, a one-off path it's not a, a do it one day and see if it works path it's a life choice in which you're constantly refusing to allow life to beat you over the head you're constantly choosing instead to to um, 
Look at things through the eyes of your beloved Creator. Look at things through the eyes of a Jesus. Look at things through the eyes of a Buddha. They don't see things from the negative perspective. They see it as a cause and effect. They see it as a place where they need to improve upon. And so it's a constancy of just catching it sooner, 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 until when it pops up in our head, we don't allow it to manifest in our world. But sometimes we have to catch it. You know, one year, two years later, and work ourselves back until we're catching it 10 minutes into a, an irritation and bring it back until we catch it right at the beginning. Happiness is a choice, but it is also uh, a, a life choice. It's not a, uh, it's not a race. Um, it's somewhere we're constantly working on getting better at it. Okay? So I'm going to read some of the comments here. <laughs> Thank you, Anne-Marie. Yeah, and Rose says, I was almost murdered three times, almost beaten three times, but she chose to serve people. Good. Uh, Helena asks if I have any guided meditations. Um, not yet. Not yet. Uh, I, I will consider doing that, but I haven't done any yet. Um, there are so many, so many things that are available to us out there that we don't, we don't necessarily have to have um, the Eastern or the Western medicines. They assist us. Uh, welcome, Shirley. Welcome, Richie. Okay. Um, yes. Of course, those herbs can help. Yes, of course, the acupuncture can help. Yes, of course, uh, pharmaceuticals can assist us with at least quelling the, um, the pain or the irritation or the depression or whatever it is. Of course, these things uh, are beneficial. But if we can't get it, then that means money is the issue. And if money is the issue, that means we need to do the recognition of that problem. And so we do what it takes to resolve that. If you're stuck at home, okay. There is home courses you can take to become educated so that you can do things from home to make money. Uh, even if you're handicapped, you can do things from home to make money. There's quite a few things out there. You just have to become educated in it. But you need money for that. Okay. You make an agreement with somebody uh, that you will pay them back. Once you finish that course and you start making some of that money, you pay them back. Just find something that's $500 or so. There's lots of those things. Uh, other solutions, you can, you can further your education. There's always a solution, including clearing the karma for that, uh, the financial conditions. As those improve, okay, then you can get some of those health issues resolved. You can also, in the meantime, research all of these things on the internet to resolve your health issues. So there's solutions if you want them. Um, the reason I'm semi-educated on this is because I've done the homework. And I've suffered, you know, don't like it. So I do whatever it takes to stop suffering. Share, share whatever wisdom I can and hopefully some of it serves you. So in a nutshell, happiness is a choice. How do we get there? By catching ourselves when we're not in that place that we want to be. When we catch ourselves, we remind ourselves of cause and effect. We immediately recognize that whatever suffering we're experiencing is very likely karmic. If not, it's a heaven's test. And you can identify it's a heaven's test simply by uh, if it's very left fieldish, uh, and you've been asking heaven for um, your, the path to enlightenment, you're very on a, a very aggressive path to spirituality, then heaven will definitely give you tests. Um, in either case, the solution is the same. Offer love and service, ask for forgiveness for whatever suffering you're in the process of experiencing, and uh, choose to move into gratitude as quickly as possible by looking for anything in your in your immediate environment, just anything in your immediate environment, and just start being grateful. Anything you can find, just move into gratitude. Surround yourself with anything happiness. Put on comedy. Change the energetics as quick as you can, and then continue to do that. Next time something comes up, uh, do the same thing. This eventually moves you into a place of a consistency of responsibility, consciousness, and hopefully happiness if you are consistent with it. 
It's all about changing perspective and applying the tools. The Master Shah has given to us tools that assist us. This is one of them, The Greatest Love. <coughs> um, it's a new book that just came out. It's 10 or $12. <coughs> Yesterday I gave an offer where five people took advantage of it, and they received the transmission in this book of Divine Love. It's a, it was a, Divine Love is a $100 um, uh, uh, transmission, and the book is $12, and the shipping is $10. And uh, so what I did is I said, you know, for $50 plus the shipping, you get all of that. But if you um, understand more about Master Shah and how he works, he puts power in things like this calligraphy. The book has power, but he puts power in the calligraphy as well. And so if you're in a place of unhappiness, you just stop for five minutes, ask the blessings in the calligraphy to bless you. You can just put it on your heart, put on some nice, relaxing, loving music, or chant Love, Peace, and Harmony, if you know that song. And um, you can simply have control at that moment and choose to be in a loving place. If you don't know who Master Shah is, do yourself a favor and get one of his books, The Power of Soul, or this new one called Greatest Love. Um, it will open your heart and it will open you to new possibilities of healing at the level of origination, the level of soul. Because when we heal things at the level of origination, then the karma that brought the cause, that created the effect, can then be addressed directly. And whatever else is happening in your life will start slowly but surely to shift to the positive again it's not a race you have to be consistent with the shift and can choose to be uh, in a place of gratitude as much as possible but it does make a difference so rose is not at the library it just came out so uh, but it's $12 uh, from Amazon you can go and get it that way and, uh, and maybe you can find a friend rose that has Amazon Prime so it's free shipping and then you just pay your friend the 10 11 12 dollars whatever it is and then they can ship free to your friend um, so that's a way around it to make it very affordable okay um, so it's a good good potential solution good i'm very happy to hear that phyllis i always keep that positive take regardless of the the labels the labels are just labels okay so we will finish today. We will chant. I will chant love, peace, harmony to serve you. I will turn on my love, peace, harmony jendan to come out to serve each and every one of you. Um, I have done this healing before, and uh, it's amazing what people's responses were. They were quite surprised. So, make a request for one thing, just one thing. And dear the source, soul song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all of the souls watching this live stream now present in the future all the souls listening on podcast please turn on dear my love peace harmony Dao Don and Jin Don please turn on to the soul of love peace harmony Jin Don from Mother Earth love you and respect you bow down to you we ask most humbly that you join and offer this blessing as well to the soul of all the transmissions Transmitted to the source, soul song of love, peace, and harmony, please turn on. As I chant love, peace, and harmony to serve all those that are listening and watching, please bless their request as appropriate. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> so prepare to receive. Make your request to heaven. Love, peace, harmony, soul song, blessing begin. Lula, Lula, Li. 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 Lula. While you're receiving, think about all the things to be grateful for. Oh, 
，相爱平安的谢，相爱平安的谢。I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Lu la, lu la li. Lu la, lu la la li. Lu la, lu la li. Lu la, lu la li. Lu la, lu la li. Lula, wo ai wo xin er ling, wo ai tuan ren lei, ren li ren er mu shi shang, shuang ai ping an er xie. 相爱平安和谐。I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace. And harmony, love, peace, and harmony. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la li. Lula, lula. Lula, 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 lula. Wo ai wo xin er ling, wo ai tuan ren lei, wang li. Rong har mu shi shang, shuang ai ping an e xie, shuang ai ping an he xie. I love my heart and soul. I love all. Humanity, join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, how, how! Thank you, the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony. Thank you, Dao and Divine Love, Peace, Harmony Jin Dons. Please return. Thank you, Mother Earth. It was a very powerful blessing. I'm very surprised, actually, how many beings of light came. So they're very powerful. Remember, service is one of the keys. So if you chant this song,、uh, Rose has it right on key. She said. I need prosperity and peace and love, Amen, for all people, not just me. I tell you, that's the highest wisdom. You chant to serve others, you will get what you desire. It's a natural law,、uh, natural law of cause and effect. You chant unconditionally to serve others. Chant often. 
chant to serve others that have the condition of bipolar effect, chant to serve others that have the condition of depression, chant to serve others that have the condition of fibromyalgia, chant to serve others unconditionally, not thinking of yourself at all, heaven will give you virtue. It is the law of cause and effect. It works in every direction. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for sharing, letting other people know about this live stream and this opportunity to receive healing and blessings. I do offer individual consultations. I do offer soul readings. I do offer miracle level healing blessings for just about anything you can think of. So if you would like to know more, you can contact me through Facebook or through my website that's listed above. Uh, just, you know, uh, text me uh, through Facebook Messenger. And my uh, uh, email, and Kristen uh, uh, usually posts my phone number and email. So thank you, Kristen, for that. Um, so love you, love you, love you. Thank you to all the beings of light who have come to offer their unconditional service at this time. We're deeply grateful. Please respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Thank you, everybody. Love you, love you, love you. We will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.